Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Day. So, so we open up with you brothers. You can go ahead and so dealing with this, the situation that happened in Memphis is a tragic situation. Our hearts go out for the family. So with these things happening, like this is now we have body cams, things of that nature. We a lot of us were in the streets when we was younger. Mm -hmm. So these things happen all the time. I, I remember when I was younger being harassed by black cops. Mm. For just standing on the standing on the standing on the block, and what happened was if if you resisted, the punishment was worse. Yeah. But if you didn't resist, they still tormented you, so to say, but they didn't torment you as much. That's excellent. But mm -hmm. the the question for those of us in the black community, the question is whether whether it's the black cop, the white cop. The question is why are these things happening over and over and over and over again? and nothing's being changed. We marching, we fighting for rights, we fighting for laws to be changed, but nothing is changing in our favor. So the thought process is, okay, what is the solution? Because as we brought out many times we've been on here, we voted, we got, the, we was given the, the right to vote, we've marched, uh, what are some other things? Uh, we've marched, we tried to come together, we go to, we go to Christianity, we go to various religions, but yet and still, after 400 years of cattle, chattel slavery and then now of so-called being free, we still going through the same things. Mm. We're not being hung on trees, but we're being shot down in the streets. We're being beat in the streets. The question is, why are these things happening? And what is the solution for us to get out of these situations? Because we're the only people that happen to on a large grand scale. We, we are the only people that it happens to. So the solution is in the Bible. Get uh, that Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So when you examine the biblical, the biblical text, the book of Deuteronomy was written by Moses to the children of Israel. And this is a prophecy that he's telling them, something will happen to y'all in the future, that if y'all don't keep the commandments, if you don't do what God told you to do, if you don't follow his rules, then bad things are going to happen to you in the future. I'm going to jump to verse 66, dealing with 65, dealing with the, the police, the multiple instances of police brutality with the young man in Memphis, Tyree just recently, George Floyd, uh, Laquan, done, all of the young men that have been murdered by the police. Read. Verse 65, And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. And like you mentioned, Eddie, you mentioned that in that video, you could see the brother was scared. He was in fear for his life. Now, we don't know the full, we don't, we don't really know the full details of what happened prior to it, of whether he was, because I think they said that he was driving recklessly, and that's why they pulled him over, but it was like four cops on him. And that's what happens in the neighborhood. You get pulled over, two, three co two or three police cars pop up behind, and that's... That's what that's what goes on in our communities. But it says, And among these nations thou shalt find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. In this nation, whether the cop is black, the cop is white, when we get pulled over, fear f fills us. Because automatically our first thought is, oh man, I'm finna, I'm finna die, I'm finna get put to death. But we just read in Deuteronomy 28 and 15, the reason why we why we are in that state of mind is because we are not break, keeping God's commandments. We're outside of God's uh, protection. protection because we're not doing what He said He said what He told us to do. Read on. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. So He said He's gonna give us a trembling heart, failing of eyes, and sorrow of mind. That's the when you go to our that's the that's the life. Yeah, brothers standing on the corners and. Doing, they, they playing tough, but when the police roll up, what you see? Right. Fell in the eyes. It's fear. But that's because we broke God's commandments. Read on. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, 
And thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. This covers the black community. We have no assurance of our life. When we walk out the most of our young men, when they walk out the door of their house, whether whether they fearing the brother down the street that's gonna shoot them down, or they fearing they're gonna get pulled over by the police or something gonna happen with the police. They have no fear. They we have no we have we have no confidence that we're gonna live past 25. Mm -hmm. It's probably lower than that now. Probably like 2021. 20, mm -hmm. Read on. Verse 67. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even. So when you wake up in the morning, you're waiting for the day to be gone. Because the day is so, the, the, our days are so uh, troublous and, 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 and full of torment. We wake up in the morning, man, I can't wait for this day to be over. And then you read on. And that even thou shalt say, Would God it were morning. And even at night, man, I can't wait till the morning. We just waiting until basically until, until it's, the time's up. We living day by day in fear and doubt of our lives. And it's just like, man, I can't wait till this day over. Oh, I can't wait till the morning. We have no hope in this in this in this life. Read. For the fear of thine for the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Because of and all of this is when we're like this, things of these things like this are going on because we broke God's commandments. Because we stopped doing what God told us to do. We cop stopped keeping the Sabbath day holy which is uh, Friday, sundown, and Saturday. Meaning we don't work, we don't buy, we don't sell, we don't cook. Uh, what else? Did I name everything? Yeah, I think no I got everything. No no cooking, no working. And then go to 11, no working. Uh, Lamentations 4 and 17. These things are continuously happening because we, we, haven't, we haven't tried to do what no black man has, has what we haven't did what's necessary to actually change the conditions. The conditions, the solutions are in the Bible. The Bible is our blueprint of what we must do to stop these things from happening. Read. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4, and verse 17. As for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. So even, I think I think y'all mentioned the, uh, us fighting to get the laws changed and things like that. They're not gonna change no laws for us, and even if they change, if they change some laws to try to appease us, it's gonna be surface, just like voting. They gave us the the right to vote, but every I think ten every years. Tw ten years it gotta it be expires. renewed. Yep. It expires. But even when we vote, our vote don't matter. Mm -hmm. No matter how you slice it, how you think, our votes do not matter. They count right. the electoral votes. Millions of us can go and vote, and they don't change who's going to win that election because our votes don't. That's, it, they they put it on the surface that they put it on the surface as if oh go and vote, mm -hmm. but when we vote, it doesn't solve no problems. Mm -hmm. It doesn't solve our, the issues in our community. We're from the aldermen to the, um, the the senators, the mayors, they are not set up for us. Even when you you get you get black mayors, you get black uh, aldermen and mm -hmm. things like that. They only do what they're told to do. Mm -hmm. They could they gon they gonna give a good speech and all of that to get in the office, but when they get in the office, they may have like food pantries and set certain things up. But they have limitations of what they're gonna be able to do. Once they get in that office yeah. and sit down, like, yeah, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. The the higher ups like, nah, you're not gonna do that. No, you're not gonna do this. No, you're gonna do this. They're just puppets. They just puppets to they're set up to keep us in the in the state that we're in because we broke God's commandments. They set up uh, to, to pacify us. Right. They set up to pacify us. Where where it, it seems that anger. Yeah. It, it seems like they they helping and supporting us, but all it is is like a it's like a, a um. A I don't want to say bandage. It's like a, a bandage, bandage over a gunshot wound. Oh, yeah, mm. a bandage over a yeah. gunshot wound. Where it's it's it seems like it's help, but it's not really help. It's just to soothe us to, until we calm down, we get out of our emotions. And then once our emotions fade, we right back to normal. Everything is right back to normal. No more marching. No more, and the thing about it, like in this situation, it's a tragic situation where the cops killed the young man. Our young brothers on the street do this day in and day out. Memphis is just as like Chicago. It's just a little it's smaller, but the gangbangers is doing that every day. Where, where is where? Why, why are they not marching? Why are we not marching? When the gangbanger shooting the young men's down, when they shooting, they do a drive-by shooting, and the young a little child get shot, mm -hmm. and sitting in their living room. Why are we not marching? Why is the not same energy not pushed when it's the when it's the gangs doing those things? Mm -hmm. And either one is either the, the cops doing it and the gangs doing it. Both of them are wrong, 
but there's a double, uh, it's like a double negative, a double standard yeah. mm -hmm. with, the, with, the, with our communities. When, when it comes to the game bangers, oh, snitches get stitches. I can't snitch, I can't, I, I ain't see nothing. Mm -hmm. But then when the cops do it, oh, hang them. Give them the books. We that, need judgment, we need justice. That itself alone shows you how hypocritical we is as a people and, mm -hmm. and, and, and some of the reasons why we can't get over these hurdles. Obviously, it's the well. We let it be known that it's through the Bible, and this is the solution. But if you just examine that on a carnal level, you you understand that it's very hypocritical. You like the officers going over. You can't ha say, "Hey, look, why y'all doing it?" And then when we do it to one another, then yeah. it's you know you understand. So that's it's just hypocritical, mm. right? Like I said, it's a, like when we get we going over the solutions because the scriptures give us solution, even with dealing with the police. Get um did we finish that yeah we finished that limitation. Go to uh first Sirach nine and thirteen. So the scripture gives us the solution. And this is why we we all every time we come on, we said the Bible is the solution for us to get out of the the situations that we are in. Read that. The book of Sirach, chapter nine and verse thirteen. Keep thee far from the man that hath power to kill. So the Bible said, Keep thee far from the man that hath power to kill. We all know, and it's been shown through time, that the police got the power to kill. Because mm -hmm. they kill, and what happened? They get death duty. They kill, and what? What They, they get They get paid leave. Paid leave. Yeah, that's it. They don't get justice. Yeah. It says, keep thee far from the man that has power to kill. Meaning, you get pulled over, put your hands 10 to 2, and be like, yes, sir. I'm, I'm, putting, I'm, I'm reaching in my right pocket to get my wallet. You, you comply. Because when you run or you or you 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 resist them, mm -hmm. it it just, it just makes the situation worse. It doesn't help. That's why I say keep thee far from the man that has power to kill. Read. So shall thou not doubt the fear of death. So it says, so shall thou not doubt the fear of death. So if you if you keep yourself far from the man that has power to kill, meaning stop selling drugs, mm -hmm. stop game banging, stop living that life that pro that that uh, provokes them, that attracts them to pull you over, mm -hmm. that attracts them to, hey man, he looks suspicious. Stop living that life. Because then, when you stop living that life, you get pulled over, you're like, I'm good. I ain't got nothing to worry about. Cause I'm, 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 in, I'm in compliance with the law. I ain't got no drugs on me. I ain't been, I'm not drinking and driving. I'm good. So when they pull you up, yeah, what's, what's the problem, sir? Oh, I'm pulling you over cause you swerved a little bit. Oh, I remember I was looking for something. You, 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 you justified. Mm -hmm. You don't have no fear of, man, I got this stuff in the trunk, and now you get out and you may be running. You may be running because you're trying to run from the judgment, because you might have something you're not supposed to have. Or you might have been just involved in something that you may not have. And we're not saying that this is the case with the young man. It, it may have been just an a innocent traffic stop, and he, it, it could have just been a case of he was just fearful because how they, they was aggressive. But like I said, we don't know the full backstory. Right. Unless I missed something, we don't know the full backstory. They just said that he was driving reckless, and they pulled him over. And we, when we see the body cam, it was like four cops, and it was a, it was overly aggressive towards him. But we don't know the full backstory of what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, was that it on that? No, sir. Read on. And if thou come unto him, make no fault, lest he take away thy life presently. Remember that thou goest in the midst of snares. And that thou walkest upon the battlements of the city. That's what's going on. Be peaceful. Be respectable. And you're not going to have no problems from the mm -hmm. public. Like, to that capacity. That's, that's the solution. That's the solution for us as a people. Because the, the, cars, is, the cars is dealt against us. Mm -hmm. Because we in the land of our captivity. Because we broke God's commandments. We did against God's commandments. So he turned his back on us. So as long as we are not doing what he said to do. We have no protection. And we are, and, and they not, they, uh, let me see, how can I say that? They not justified in what they doing, but it's prophesied that that's what's going to happen when we not keeping the commandments. When we not doing what God told us to do. Go to Hosea, uh, uh, Matthew 5 and 25. Hosea 5 and 25. This is the book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 25. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, so, and thou be cast into prison. This is another solution. It says, agree with thine adversary quickly, 
If you get pulled over to the police, with by the police, agree with them. Especially if you're in the wrong. Mm -hmm. Just agree with them. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what? I, I, my, I was swerving. I know. You agree with them. Hey, I just I just did some evil on this block. And I, 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 was, I, was, I was driving fast because I was running from it. Agree with them quickly. Because nine times out of ten, the, the punishment is not going to go that far of them shooting you down. Unless you already did something to them where they're chasing you and trying to get you. But it says agree with thine adversary quickly. Because that way you lessen you lessen that uh, the aggression that they're going to have towards you. You lessen them pulling you over and they all are already in their mind. They got the, especially if they, if they already got the gun pulled. Mm -hmm. Agree with them quickly. You may save your life. When you run from them, all of that is resistance. It's just like a uh, when you think about it, and I don't want to compare us to, to animals, but when you think about a dog, if you've ever been chased by a dog, and let's say you was with your friends and y'all running from a dog, the, the nine times out of the ten, that dog is going to chase the brother that's running fastest because it's a challenge. You're resisting. You're showing that resistance, that dog is like, oh man, it's a challenge. I'm going finna, I'm finna to get him. And when that dog gets you, what he going to do? He going to bite you. It's the same thing here. Agree with thine adversary quickly hmm. when thou art in the way with him. Because when you when you resist, they like, oh he want this, oh he want all oh, this. Dude. And actually, this is what is going on. Even even with our and, and it's sad that it's it's come to this. But even with a, a black cop, oh this slave running, oh this slave running. He think he's gonna get away from me. That's what's going on. We are still in. We are still in slavery. We just don't have the chains on our neck. Mm -hmm. That's what's going through these cops' mind. And remember, when we was in slavery, they had our own people mm -hmm. set up as overseers over us, mm -hmm. and we was doing it's the same thing. Taskmasters. Taskmasters. It's the same thing. It's no different. So we 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 got to get out that mindset thinking that we free because we don't have chains on. Our, we got we can go get a job. We can. We can start a business. No, we're still in our land of our captivity. We have not been freed from slavery. It's just not the same. Now it's more mental than it is physical. But they treat us the same way. We try to run from them. We try to resist. The same way they was hanging us on nooses back during slavery. Now they're just shooting us down in the streets. Mm -hmm. um, did we finish that? Yes, sir. And go to Hosea chapter 4 and verse 1. Because these, these are the things that plague the community. And as we go through these scriptures, we're reading out of the Bible. And as, as the topic was supposed to be, uh, the, the, what's the, how is the Bible authentic? We're reading that everything that's happening in, the, in our communities, we bringing it we bringing it to life out of the Bible. Yep. That lets you know that the Bible is accurate. You can, you can say, anybody can say, anything against the Bible, but when you can go in the Bible and show the history of the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American man, that proves its authenticity. Because this Bible has been around longer than any one of us. The Bible goes back very far, but the, tech, the words on the page ain't changed. They're the same. They've been translated from language to language, but these, it's the same meaning, same thing, because it's been preserved for us to show us who we are so that we can wake up in these last days. Read that. The book of Hosea, chapter 4 and verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. So this this another message to Israel. And as we've been showing, this this the things that's occurring applies to the black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. We the only one face these issues. Read. Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. This is what goes on in our communities. There's no mercy. There's no truth. We hate the bro we hate we walk out the door and hate the brother that live right across the street from us going through the same struggles we going through, mm. but we hate them. Dealing with the dealing with the cops. A lot of them cops. They used to. They was in the streets, mm -hmm. and they came. They grew up, and they came and get. They came to be cops. Now they against their own people. And granted, some of our people not. They not. They not. Um. They not doing right, so to say. Right. Some of our people wicked as hell. Yeah, they wicked, yeah. but they turn against the pe the very people that they came out of the same situation. 
and, and it's sad to say it, some of our people, some of our people deserve it because they mind not right. And they, they, re, they refuse and reject even when they're given, they're given avenues of escaping and getting out of that lifestyle. They still will continue in that lifestyle. And a lot of times it's because it's all they know and they're scared to make that change. But the scripture, that that's, this is all in our communities, swearing. I swear, I swear to God. I swear on my mama head. All that, that's, that's us. Swearing and lying. We always lying to get to try to get back, get back, get uh get um get over. Get over. And get through. That's us, that's us. Finesse. And killing. Finesse our way through things. And killing. I mean you ain't gotta explain that. And stealing and committing adultery. Single parent households thrive in the black community. That's committing adultery. And it says they break out and blood touches blood. This is what we see here. The black cops beating the young man until he died. That's blood touches blood. Uh, read on. Therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth, that dwelleth in shall languish. With the beast of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. And that's it, but that's, that's the... We're dealing with the situation, it's, it's, it's a tragic situation and none of us want that to happen to any of our brothers. But the solution, the solution to stop these things from happening is for us to return to our God. The Bible is our history book. It's, it's our solution to, changing the, to, changing, to change, changing the conditions that we live in. It's the only solution. And we, we, we've, it's been proven, everything, we've, everything else that we've tried does not work. We went, like I said, we went to Christianity, Christianity teaches us all we gotta do is believe. You ain't gotta keep the commandments, and failed. The vast and you and the vast majority of our communities, you got a church on every corner, every block. You got churches right across the street from each other. You got churches that's like big extravagant buildings with glass windows and all this extravagant stuff. Then you look in the community right behind it, and it's nothing. Houses boarded up, houses burnt down, and been sitting there for twenty years with nobody going in and improving it. What are the churches doing for the community? What are the different, all these various religions? Islam, uh, we, we, a lot of us, it's not main, Islam and Christianity are the biggest. Right. But you got our people in Egyptology, uh, Scientology. Buddhist, Scientology, all these different religions. Politics. But uh, the politics, politics, all of these things are going on, but the commu our communities are not changing. Our communities are just getting worse. And the only time when you when you do see them improving and getting better, what do you see? Who is it doing? It's gentrification. Mm -hmm. It's it's the in our enemies. It's the the so-called white man. He saw coming in and buying up the community, and they fixing it up. And then now you see the bike trails. When you see the bike trails, it's over. <laughs> you see a Starbucks. You see what else? Now you got Panera. You see them start building that stuff up. That's the start of gentrification. They finna take that part. They finna kick everybody out the project. Project rebuild the buildings and take the rent sky high. So now we unable to get in. But that's that's it, unless y'all wanna add something. That's that's dealing with that situation, that's pretty much that's the solution to, for, to, for us to be able to change that situation. So you you guys go out on the streets and teach this every day or every was it weekly or uh for definite we go out every Every Sabbath, every Saturday, we go out. But we also go throughout the week. We only do fly, maybe in the in the sense of fly missions. We do library events, uh, like today we here on the radio show. We we have various ways. We and we have some and some sometimes. We actually through, oh, nationwide, we yeah, go out every day. Every day, yeah. Nationwide, we do go out every day. Nationwide, every day. Nationwide, every day. But you guys sometimes. So when you guys are out there, what what is the main resistance that you get? Whether it's from. Um, our own people or others. What's the what was the main resistance or, or or the the main resistance you deal with that real quick? Uh yeah, uh, the main resistance that we get is whether or not we should keep God's commandments. Uh, main resistance would be whether or not if God is dealing with one specific people, um, how we supposed to live, how we supposed to govern ourselves. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the the main resistance that we get. Order, keeping laws, right, keeping God's commandments. I observed some you know, videos of you guys, of course, you know, I'm an uh, avid fan and follower. Um, I noticed that some of these neighborhoods, you guys be in be some real tough neighborhoods. That's the point. Is that purpose? Yes. 
because that's where our people is. Right. Uh, let me get uh, these. And you, you still get that you while you're getting it. I want to add to what he said. Um, you said, what, where's the, the main, it's uh, surprisingly, you said where we get the, make the most resistance. Surprisingly, you know, you know what? It, it's not actually when we go into the, the hoods. Some in some hoods, yeah, they don't like it because they're trying to sell drugs and stuff like that. When we get the most resistance, when we go to when we encounter Christianity, that's when we get the most resistance. Yeah. We've we've gotten threats. We got threatened by Christians in one of our cities. We in one of the cities we in was it Minnesota. Mm -hmm. We were met with AKs and, yes. and guns. Like we were, like we was finna, like we pulled up with guns. We were met with that much resistance and it was a Christian church. It wasn't the, the hood, it was the Christian church. They met us with that much resistance, ready to kill us for teaching the word of God. I'm starting to hear that for my city. That's my city. I hate that. I hate that. happening. You guys yeah. in my city. Wasn't many happens. I'm not starting to teach you. Christian. Oh, hell. Wow. This, is, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3 and the 10th verse. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I have, that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart, and him with mine ears, with thine ears, and go, get thee to them of the captivity. So the scriptures command us to go and get to the, get to them of the captivity. Who was them of the captivity? The, the diaspora, the people that was made slaves here in America and across the four corners of the earth. And within these uh, nations and communities, they're all in these poverty stricken neighborhoods, they're in the ghettos, they're in the projects, all in these rough neighborhoods. So that's what God commands us to go and preach his word. He says, get to them of the captivity. Come on. Verse 12. Then the spirit took me up. No, I finished verse 11. Verse 11. Go and go get thee and go and get thee to them of the captivity uh -huh. unto the children of thy people unto who unto the children of thy people so god didn't send us to all nations he said get thee unto the captivity of the children of thy people not all people because all people is not in captivity he said thy people ezekiel come on and speak unto them and speak unto them Come and on. tell them, thus saith the Lord God. So we're not supposed to be speaking our words. He says, tell them, thus saith the Lord thy God. Come on. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Whether they're going to listen or not, to speak my words. So that's what we do. So it's intentional uh, where we go. We go to where all our people are, where the captivity are, where the drug infested is, the gang infested is. Because those are the people that need the help. Those are the people that whose minds are sick. That's those are the places where he read in Hosea 4 1 where it talks about there's murder, there's killing, there's uh lying, there's uh adultery in the land, in the midst of Jerusalem, in the midst of God's people, the children of the captivity. Right. So it's intentional. Hmm. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> I was speaking to one of the guys um from another camp and we was kind of building and he brought that up, like, you know, we go out to some of the roughest places that you the, the churches wouldn't you know you don't see much uh of uh but like i can say the christian church mm -hmm. and this is one of the commandments like you just brought out to go out and and and, and preach the gospel right. and, and that's 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 admirable if you guys doing it although it's as dangerous as it is like you said uh you were met with guns and stuff and ironically in the city that i'm from <laughs> was, i'm sure it was minneapolis and um, that was a christian church by the way and it was a church yes come out with guns. a christian church yep Okay, I think I know. <laughs> what but, people fail to realize is that although they, they love to preach love, right? The Christian church historically is known to be one of the most violent religions in the world. It is the most violent. It is the most violent religion in the world. Christians conquered the Americas. Christians enslaved the native Indians. Christians enslaved the so-called African Americans, which are of the tribe of Judah, the Israelites. Christians is the ones that pushed uh, the transatlantic slave trade. In fact, uh, it was Pope Nicholas V of the Catholic Church of Spain that instituted the transatlantic slave trade in 1441. Those were your good Christians. Mm -hmm. So what's the, the, the you help? The listeners understand the, the, when you say Christian. Now oh, that's shit. that's is that related to a certain dynamic of people? And uh, what's its origin and the difference of, of what you guys preach? What's the 
So Christians or Christianity was formed by so-called white people, right? Uh, they pretty much took or perverted the gospel of Christ and uh, instituted their paganism uh, and pushed that into the world. Uh, let me get uh, 2 Corinthians 11. First, uh, let me get Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4. The book of St. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4. Come on. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, uh -huh. for many shall come in my name. So he says, many shall come in his name. Meaning what? They were going to say they were going to come in the name of Christ. That's Christians. Come on. Saying, I am Christ. I'm a Christian. I'm a follower of God. Come on. And shall deceive many. And shall do what? Deceive many. How do we know that that came to pass? Because majority of the world is Christian. Majority of all European nations, they are Christians. Come on. And ye shall hear of wars and right, from there. Second Corinthians 11 and 3. All right. The book of Second Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Uh -huh. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve uh -huh. through his subtility. Uh -huh. so through his trickery. Go ahead. So your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. Uh, the simple things in Christ is that what? That he's a black man, that he died for the nation mm -hmm. of Israel. He was prophesied to deliver his people. Uh, he uh, not reintroduced, but retaught the commandments to the children of Israel. Those are simple things in Christ. But another man would come just like Eve was tricked and she didn't honor her husband. He would come and teach the or pervert the simplicity, the simple things that is in Christ. Meaning he would pervert the gospel of Christ. Paul is literally prophesying of that coming to pass, repeating the same thing that Christ said in, Ma in the, uh, Matthew the 24th chapter. Read on. Verse 4. <clears throat> for if he that cometh. So he says, for if he that cometh, come on, preacheth another Jesus. Another what? Another Jesus. So there's more than one Jesus is out there. Because remember, Christ said, uh, be not the seed of there shall be many that come in my name. So he said that the same thing that Christ said. <clears throat> there was going to be people that teach another Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come on. Whom we have not preached. The apostles didn't teach that Christ was white. The apostles didn't teach that God or Christ came to uh, die for all nations. They did not teach that. The laws are done away They didn't with. teach that the laws were done away with. They did not teach that. You cannot find one scripture in the Bible that teaches that. Okay, come on. Or if you receive another spirit. Or if you receive another spirit. The scripture is talking about the apostles and, and Christ being austere men. It says that he was a hard man. But when you look at, examine the spirit of Christians, they're all, yellow makes me sad. Oh, we're loving, it's going to be okay. Oh, they speak very effeminate. They speak very soft. They speak very enticing. They got all these uh, uh, eloquent words and speech, right? Come on. Which ye have not received. Come on. Or another gospel. Or another what? Gospel. Or another doctrine. Gospel. Christianity in the Bible is two different things. They're two different things. Christianity is paganism, but they try to pervert scriptures to push their doctrine or their ideology. Mm -hmm. The Bible is against Christianity. So I, don't, I, wanna, I want people to uh, be very clear. Christianity and the Bible are actually two different things. So with them teaching a different gospel, with them teaching a different Christ or Jesus, it came another spirit and it came another gospel. And that other gospel today is Christianity, which is not what the apostles taught. Is that it on that? It's more. Go ahead. Which ye have not accepted, uh -huh. ye might well bear with him. And that's what we do. We bear with our people. We try to uh, compel them and show them through the scriptures what you believe is something that you've been taught or forced to be taught, forced to learn through slavery. That's why black people are Christians today. Because remember, we couldn't read or write. So how did we become Christians? How did the whole world become Christians? Hmm. Through force, through slavery, by murder, pillage, killing. That's how they became Christians. Yep. So we bear with them and show them through the scriptures that you know not what you believe. You have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Yeah, something you want to add also? Uh, yeah. So, and then... And, uh, the thing is, a lot of the times, get uh, Acts chapter 11, <clears throat> verse 26. A lot of times, because we say it's Christianity, because when you say Christians, sometimes it can, it can create, it can create some confusion because people say, well, Christians, 
they were called Christians in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But the Christian, the Christians of today that flood the churches, mm -hmm. is not the it's not the Christians that read that real quick. I want to the book of Acts, chapter eleven and the sixth verse. Twenty six. Verse twenty six. And when he had found him, he brought him into Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So this is where we see the first to first see the term Christians in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But when the disciples, the disciples, the apostles that followed Christ, what they was teaching was Christ dying for the nation of Israel and bringing back the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom back as one nation. He was he wasn't bringing back he wasn't bringing the the uh, the other the Gentile nations mm -hmm. into the fold of Israel. No, he was restoring the uh, they was teaching the restoration of the, the northern kingdom of Israel, which was called the Gentiles, because they were living Gentile. They was living as Greeks. They was living as uh, the other nations. They were living as Romans. Mm -hmm. He was calling them back putting them back in place as one nation. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what the, the true Christians was. And when they called us Christians then, it was derogatory. Right. Yes. They didn't they was they, it was a, it was a derogatory term coined on us because the Pharisees didn't like the fact. They didn't like the fact that we was going out and teaching the truth. Right. Teaching teaching them basically Follow pulling the, the people. Right. They was they was they didn't like the fact that we was teaching them to come away from them Pharisees and them Sadducees, come away from them and come and serve the true living God mm -hmm. because they leading you to a pit, basically leading you to the pit of hell which is the same that's what Christianity is doing today yeah. and go to uh, Acts chapter 29 I mean not Acts um, yeah. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah Isaiah chapter 29 because this is this is everything that the officer brought out with Christianity when you when you examine Christianity and you look and you read the Bible what Christianity teaches is not in the Bible they teach that Christ, they use, they, they, they twist Matthew 5 and 17 where Christ said, um, read that real quick. Let's get that real quick. Which one? Isaiah Matthew 20, 5 and 17. Oh, oh Isaiah 29. We'll come back to that. All but right. this is one of the scriptures that they, that they isolate and teach out of context. The when book they, of... When they oftentimes, oh. because we read the Bible precept upon precept. A lot of times they, we are, we're accused of taking it out of context. But this is a scripture that the, the Christianity will use and pull it out of the, of the context, read it. The book of St. Matthew, chapter five and verse 17. Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am, I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. And a lot of the, out of that whole verse, what, a Christian, what, a, what Christianity would do is just folk hone in on the word fulfilled and say Christ fulfilled the law. We don't have to keep it. We just gotta believe in him because he kept the law for us and we under grace. So. Saying it without saying it, Christianity is telling you that oh, I can do whatever I want and just go and pray to pray to God through Christ, and He gonna forgive me. Then, but the, but if you tell them that, they're like, no, that's not what we saying. And we we ask them, hey, so you gotta keep the Bible? Yeah, you gotta keep the Bible. Then when we read the law. It's like, no, you ain't gotta do that. That's the Old Testament. That explains why it's the most violent, the most bloody, and the most exactly. murderous religion on the earth. Exactly. Because they say we, the laws are done away with. So that means I can actually kill you now. Mm -hmm. There's no law. And get away with it, and that's and that's the spirits and the fruits of Christianity within itself. And this is and that's and that actually ties back to the police brutality that we face at the hands of the the uh, the police. There, that's Christianity. This is this is a, a, a so-called Christian. Christian nation, right? So what what do you expect? That's how they came and took the land. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what comes. That's their fruit. So that's what that's all they're gonna do. That's what they know. They say the law, we ain't gotta keep the laws. Just believe in Jesus. So I can shoot I can shoot these niggas down in the street and get away with it. Excuse my language. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's that the terminology is allowed on the radio, excuse me. <laughs> um, <laughs> but excuse me, I'm gonna reframe myself. But read that again. Uh think not that I've come to destroy the law. So Christ said, Don't think that I came to destroy the law. When you read the whole he said, Don't I didn't come to destroy the law. He didn't come destroy, to destroy the, the moral law, the civil law, the dietary law, the ceremonial law. Right. There's one law that he we had. Uh, we had five groups of laws. Mm -hmm. Christ came to fulfill one group of those laws. Read that. Which one? Hebrews. No, keep reading. Okay. Uh, he said, read from the top. 
Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy. See, I am not come to destroy. Read. But to fulfill. But to fulfill. And we're going we gonna to go to what he mean when he said, I come to fulfill. Read. Read on. Verse 18. And this is we're going to read it in its full context. So if, if, because when Christianity, if the thought is he's doing, he's telling us that we ain't got to keep God's law, why would he say this? Read. Verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. The heaven and earth is still here because we still here. Read. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. He said one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So how did he do away with the law? Read. Till all be fulfilled. Till all be fulfilled. Everything ain't been fulfilled yet because destruction ain't came yet. Right. We still here. Read. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. And he says, whosoever shall break one of the least commandments. But if if, if he said he came to do away with the law, why is he saying this now? He said, if, why would he say, that's a contradiction. Right. right. Why would he say in the same breath that whoever break this least commandment, read. And shall teach man so. So you breaking the commandments and then you teaching men to do the same thing, read. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. He shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven, meaning you're not getting the kingdom of heaven. He's going to put you to death. That's what that means. It don't mean that you're going to be a, 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 a servant, a doorkeeper, or a servant. No, you're not getting it because you're not keeping the commandments. Mm -hmm. And then it says, 5 and 17, it says he came to fulfill. Mm -hmm. Go to Acts 3 and 18. Because what, what, what happened to Christ? He was he was he died on the cross. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was put to death. He was a sacrifice for the nation of Israel. So the, what he came to fulfill was to be a sacrifice for the nation of Israel. So it's the sacrificial law that we have no longer have to keep. Read that. The book of Acts, chapter three and verse eighteen. But those things which God before had shewed by by the excuse me, I'm reading it again from the top. But those things which God before had shewed by the mouth of all His prophets. That Christ should suffer. He, so that Christ should suffer. That's what he came to fulfill. Read. He has so fulfilled. Yes, so fulfilled. So that's what he came to fulfill. He didn't come and say, I'm keeping the law for you so that you ain't got to keep it. Just believe on me. That don't make no sense. Right. That contradicts everything that the Most High said in the Old Testament. Yep. He said he's going to judge us by our works. But then yet, you, we, the, the thought is put out there. And then, like I said, when you, when you, even when you have a discussion with a Christian, and you say, you, you ask them, hey, did, so you got to do what the Bible say? Yeah, you got to do what the Bible say. Well, the Bible say that you got to keep the Sabbath. No, nah, that's an Old Testament law. You ain't got to do that. Well, I thought you just said you got to keep the whole Bible from cover to cover. That's a contradiction. That's what's out. That's what's out there in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. And just the Hebrews chapter ten, and then again, I back to Isaiah. Just to f f close the door fully on that. Which, that which verse? One Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, read verse 1. Verse 1. For the law having the shadow of good things to come, and have the very image of the... Uh, the very image. Excuse me. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. So it says the law having a shadow of good things to come. Read. And not the very image of, of the things... Can never with those sacrifices. Can, can never with those what? Excuse sacrifices. Me. Can never with those sacrifices. So this lets you know that the law that it's talking about at the beginning of the verse is talking about the law of sacrifice. Read. Which they offered year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect. And then jump to verse four, four, seven, five. Verse five. Wherefore, when he cometh unto the world, he saith, sacrifice an offering thou what is not. He says, sacrifice an offering thou what is not. Why? Because when we was offering said we are going the same thing that Christianity do. We are going sacrifice for our sins, and it'll be in vain. Because we are sacrificing and go and do the same thing. Well, oh, I'm gonna go do this evil, and because I can sacrifice, I'm just gonna go do this sacrifice and, and, and I'm good. Right. That's the same thing in Christianity. Oh, I'm, I can I can Go and commit adultery. I can do this and do that. And then, go oh, church. God going to forgive you. Yeah. Or, or they'll go to church and then they'll pay their tithe. Mm -hmm. So they see, they'll be like, all right, exactly. I'm good. Right. I've wow. seen people go straight to church. I've seen guys go straight to church 
put their ties in the offering and leave right back out. Smoking the square. Yeah. And and that's the that's the and that's what that's the difference. That's the major we are the Israelites. The Bible is the book for the Israelites. The hope from cover to cover, from Rev Genesis, the Apocrypha to Revelation. This is the Bible for the Israelites. We are the true Christians that was called Christians in Acts. That's right. Mm -hmm. And with that, we taught, we always taught to keep God's laws. The Christians, the, the true Christians mm -hmm. never taught against God's commandments. Right. When we was in our right mind and doing what God told us to do, we was teaching the commandments. That's what the disciples, that's what Paul, Peter, James, John, that's what, that's what they were teaching in Acts. They were mm -hmm. teaching, they was going across teaching the commandments. And, the, and faith in Christ, meaning that Christ is a sacrifice, but we had to get our mind right and keep the commandments. Right. Did we finish that? Nope. Verse 5. Yes. Wherefore, when he cometh unto the world, he saith, Sacrifice is offering thou what is not, but a body hast thou prepared me. He said, A body hast thou prepared me. That's Christ. Read. And burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then say I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Now jump to nine. Verse nine. Then he then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, the first covenant of sacrifice. Read that he may establish the second. That he may establish the second. That's Christ being the sacrifice for the nation of Israel, restoring, re bringing the, the two, the two, the split kingdom back to one, and restoring them back to God. Read verse ten. By the which, by that, the, huh? That, that's it. Go back now. Now, now go to Isaiah. All right. Go to, go to Isaiah 28. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse, you want to start at 13? Um, I, want to, I think I want to start a little higher than that. Uh, verse Isaiah 9. 29. Yeah, sorry, man. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29 and verse 9. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. This is the this is this is Christianity. They are drunk with wine. What that that wine is not talking about the wine you go buy at the liquor store. They are drunk with the philosophies of America, the philosophies of the of Christianity of the so-called white man. They drunk with philosophies because they believe that, that you have you can, you can go into a Christian church. And they teach a whole sermon. They read one scripture and teach an hour sermon on one scripture completely opposite of what the scripture actually means. That's you drunken with wine. And then when somebody come and read the Bible to you, you say, no, that ain't, that's not true. That's not what the Bible say. You, you uh, exegete, what they say? Exegeting the scriptures wrong. Yep. Right. Your eisegesis is wrong. You, you, and you taking the scripture out of context. But yeah, you will go and listen to your pastor for an hour, two hours, and he cite one, two scriptures, and he give you a motivational speech. Mm -hmm. that, that's what goes that's what on. Read on, read on. All right. Verse 10. For the Lord have poured out upon the spirit of, excuse me. For the Lord have poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and have closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers have he covered. That's how the politicians. That's your uh, Al Sharpton's, mm -hmm. uh, Jesse Jackson's. They are the leaders that's put in front of us, but a lot of times they are sent to quiet us down, mm -hmm. calm us down, yep. do a speech and they, they calm us down. That's why I say it, the prophets and your rulers have to cover. They don't understand the Bible. They don't understand that we are going through the things that we are going through because we're breaking God's commandments. That they, I says, uh, I have put upon you the spirit of deep sleep. We are sleep in Christianity. We are sleep in Islam. We are sleeping all these other religions because these other religions are not giving us the solution to change the state in our communities. That's right. Read. The seers have he covered. Uh-huh. Verse 11. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. The book is sealed. That's why if you're not, because one, you, to be able to understand the Bible, you have to be keeping the commandments. Mm -hmm. So that's why when a lot of our, a lot of our people when they, they grow up, and I was listening to the last show that we did when, when Brother Mike was on here. A lot of our people grew up in Christianity where our grandmothers and our uh, our, grandpa, our grandmothers, parents, they were in Christianity, but we seen them go to church on Sunday, but then moms had a little dip 
that she had come over and sleep that she wasn't married to. Mm. Mom was doing drugs. Mom was smoking cigarettes. Mom was doing all type of evil. And as children, even though we didn't fully understand, we seen all that and we, we seen it as hypocrisy. Like you telling me, do what they, what our parents used to tell us, do as do I, I say, say, not as I, I do. I do. Yeah. That's hypocrisy. So we seen all this growing up and we like, we, we seen, we went to church and we seen the pastor got the women on the front row with the short skirts looking up under their skirts. We seen all that as little as children. So when we grew up and got older, we like, man, they, the Christian, that's a joke. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us grew to hate the Bible because right. we attributed the Bible because our grandmother and our grandfathers, they had the Bible, but they have it on a bookshelf open to Psalms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Right. They, they had it there. But they wasn't doing nothing that the Bible said to do. And we seen that growing up, so we was like, man, I don't want nothing to do with that Bible. And that's why a lot of our people grew up and now they're in Islam. And when they see the Bible, they like, that's nah, that's a white man's book. Right. They they because and then even then, the when when um we were in slavery, they kept us from reading the Bible, right? Why? And then they gave us, I don't know if they gave us this. A slave Bible. A slave Bible. Hmm. The slave Bible has many, it, it don't have a whole Bible. I'm just gonna say it like that. They, they took out majority of the Bible, many chapters. You would look through this. I mean, I don't know if y'all can look through it, but you would look through it and the, the, the chapters are not there. Why would they go to that great length to hide the Bible from us if the Bible is not a true book? Why would they go through that much great length to take, they took out, I mean, you, 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 you flip through it, you go from Deuteronomy to First Samuel. Oh, what happened no. to Judges? What happened to the, what happened to the Joshua. history? Joshua. What happened to all this history? You 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 flipping there. It's like Deuteron Deuteronomy one two three sixteen. That's what. The, why did they go through such great lengths to keep the Bible from us? Why wouldn't we? Why didn't they allow us to read? Why did they go through so great, so much, so great lengths? And these was like the officer brought out. These was the Christians that came over here. Mm -hmm. Peacefully, but it was deceit in their heart. Mm -hmm. They came over here as if they was coming with peace, and what they do destroyed and took over the land from the Native Americans. They were actually the uh, Antichrist. They was yeah, exactly. They was actually the Antichrist. Yep. Read on. Uh, verse eleven. The vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which man delivered to one that is learned, saying, "Read this, I pray thee." And he said, "I cannot." For it is sealed. This is what they say. You go and ask the you had go and ask the pastor a question, and he like, that's sealed. Right. We don't we don't have that understanding. They they say stuff mm. instead of just they they really don't they they try to uh, they try to cloak it as it's not been revealed to them, and as if they they have that's not that's not necessary for you to know. But that's why because they don't understand the Bible. They can they can know they can know the Bible. They can know the they can reference the scriptures from cover to cover, but they don't have no understanding. That's what right. it's saying. Read. And the book is delivered to him that is that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. This is what goes on. Read on. Verse 13. Well, for the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me. And the fear, of, and the fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. Our fear of God was ta is taught to us by our slave masters. It lets you know that that lets you know right there in itself. Like y'all just look through it. You seen how much of the Bible was missing out of this slave Bible. That lets you know that if the Bible wasn't real and the Bible wasn't a true book, mm -hmm. why would they go through great such great lengths to mm -hmm. hide what's in there? Because they know that this is our book, and when we start reading it and we start doing what it say to do, our God is gonna pull them shades off our eyes That's and we right. gonna wake up. We gonna we them 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 scales gonna come off our eyes and we gonna see this Bible is talking about me. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Just like it would happen with Nat Turner, what happened? He led a slave revolt and killed many of them. So that's why they that's why they try to have and then that's and then I wanna put a disclaimer out that that's not what we preaching. We're not saying that. We're not saying learn the Bible and go go or go get up arms and get guns and go against the enemy. No. That's not the solution. The solution is keeping the commandments of God. Right. Now read on. Let's finish this. I know we've been going for a while. Verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, 
even a marvelous work and a wonder. It's, it says this is a marvelous work. The things that we are teaching out of this Bible, this is marvelous. It's a marvelous work. That's why many people will say, well, the Bible ain't real. The Bible, you can't trace it back to it being original. Because they, the, I, they, they, the scales are over their eyes. This is a marvelous thing. It's a wonder because so long we've seen this Bible all our life. Our grandparents and all of that. We've seen this Bible all our life, but we never connected the dots. That this is our history book. Mm -hmm. Because we've been taught. We've been taught the precepts of men. And then I missed the point. He said, for as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me. And Christianity, that's like, hey, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. Blessed are the Lord. I'm saved. That's what Christianity, that's what Christ, That's what they say. Mm -hmm. But when you, you, they say blessed and highly favored, but then when you examine life, no, you're not blessed and highly favored. You're suffering the curses, just like me. Mm -hmm. You're suffering from the curses. No matter how you want to slice it and think about it, you suffering the curses. That's what, that's biblical prophecy. Mm -hmm. uh, read on. Uh, verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise man shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent man shall be hid. The wisdom of their wise, that's what's going on right now. That's what, this, this truth is coming out in the earth, and what you see, they, the, the, their wisdom is perishing. The, the understanding of that prudent man is coming to naught. That's why they, oh, you got all these different videos coming up trying to discredit us. Mm -hmm. They're trying to call us a hate group. Mm -hmm. How we a hate group when we're trying to lift up our people? Right. How we a hate group when we all got families? Brothers come in and they didn't have a family. They had broken families and now they fathers. They got jobs. They better in their life they because they, they get off drugs. Right. How is that a hate group? How is a hate group promoting men to be men and stand up and do what they supposed to be doing. Leading their household, leading their nation, getting their lives right. Stop uh, whoring out your women. Stop s selling drugs to your people. Stop killing your people. That's a hate group? It's no, only, that's a hate Go ahead. That's only a hate group to those who hate to see that. Right. Exactly. Who hate to see the that's black man is. rise up to be man. Mm -hmm. They hate that. So they're going to label us as a hate group. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what the scriptures say. That's a, a sweet savior to us. Mm -hmm. But it's death. Uh, but it's the taste, 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 taste of death to them. Yep. And that's that's what's going on. Because every, every it, as much as we do that's positive, it's flipped and turned. And that's the same thing you see when when when... When they, they, a lot of times when the events, when you seen like Laquan McDonald, he was like a, he was like 17, 18. Mm -hmm. And he, I think he was mentally ill or something. And it may not have been with him, but a lot of times when they do those, like it was a, a young man in Ohio, but a lot of times when they shoot down one of the young men in the street, they go on their Facebook page and find some evil and try to pin that try to paint the picture as right. they oh they was a bad person anyway mm -hmm. so basically what they saying is oh he deserved it because he was a bad person right. that's what goes on that's what christianity is about because i can guarantee you nine ten, nine out of ten of those cops probably ten out of ten if you go into their house they got white jesus on the wall they got the bible on their bookshelf they are christian they go to church every sunday i can guarantee you it but we are we 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 we're uh, labeled as a hate group when all we doing is raising up our people. We do doing what the Bible says. What do you say when those that say that the Bible that you're reading from is not authentic, and especially um, some of the that don't that don't think that the Bible is their original book that they believe that in their religion they believe that the Quran or that the Bible was one of the books that was revealed, but it's not the true authentic book that was revealed from from God or who they may call as Allah. Romans chapter three and verse three. Because because it's up until what we've been on, we've been on for about an hour. Everything that we brought out was out the Bible and it mm -hmm. and it and it attaches to history. Right. So if that's not proven authenticity right. of Bible, this is what this is what it is. Right. Because we can we can we can we can be up here. We can be on this show till five o'clock in the evening, mm -hmm. and most still won't believe. We can go to this Bible. We can go through this Bible cover to cover and, and and attach it to history. Bring out history books. Bring out all type of things and tie them to the Bible and show that the Bible is a true book because it spoke. The Bible was written thousands of years ago, but it documents everything that's going on today. Everything. 
declaring mm. the end from the beginning. The end from the beginning. But yet somebody was still, and that's what we just read, it's, it's the, the, the blinders are on. Mm -hmm. the, we, we showed, we just, everything that we just talked about today shows you that the Bible is a real book. Mm -hmm. That the Bible is a true book, but this is what we would tell them. The book of Romans, chapter 3 and the third verse. For what if, for what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? So, hey, you don't believe what this Bible is saying, hey, it don't, it, don't, it don't change the fact that, hey, the Bible said we was going to go into slavery on slave ships. You examine history, we went into slavery on slave ships. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that we was going to be sold from, from uh, that our children was going to be taken from us. If you examine history, our children was taken from us in slavery, sold to the next master in the next city. Even today, you got DS, you got DCFS, you got all these different things set up. Right. And these things are set up against us. They're not set up against the other nations because the other nations don't have like plain, you got the Planned Parenthood and all that. They don't have the the amount of single parent households that we have. They don't have all that. But this is what for what if some if you don't believe it, by the way, the Most High ain't opened your eyes yet. But it's still for you whether you believe it or not. It's for you. The Bible is our, our is our history book, whether you believe it or not. It's not going to change the fact that the Bible is true. Read. God forbid. Yea, let God be true. Let God be true. The words on the pages. We're reading the words of the Bible. We're not reading. We're not saying things out of our own mind. We're not printing up articles off of off the internet and coming and reading them to you. We're reading out the Bible. And the Bible is a is is. Proof is uh, the Bible is giving account of itself that it's a true book. It doesn't. The Bible don't need. Yeah, it's good. It's good sometimes to have the historical books and the archaeological facts. It's good to have those things. But without those things, the Bible stands for itself. The Bible proves its authenticity. Right. Authenticity. When you read it and you see, you read the Bible and you look at what's going on in the world, the Bible proves itself. That's the, that's how you know that the Bible is authentic. Right. It's it's a this what we what we this this thing that we this uh what we believe in like the scriptures say in uh, Hebrews eleven it says without faith it's impossible to please God mm -hmm. a lot of and that's what and that's what the the, the, the the Pharisees they always when Jesus walked the earth they always ask for a sign they always ask for a, 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 a something that they can see tangibly but he said. Well, dude, I'm not, I'm, that's going to take me off. Finish, let's read it. Finish reading it. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. Uh -huh. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So, we justified because we not on here speaking our words and our mind and what we think and what we believe and what science show. We're not saying that. We showing you thus saith the Lord. Even with, with all the things that's going on with us as a people, we're showing it to you in the Bible. And that that that's right there alone is proof that the Bible is authentic. <laughs> is it right? It, this Bible's been around longer than all of us. So we can't we can't look at the Bible and say, oh no, nah, that's not authentic. You can't trace it back. Okay. But when you read the is is what you read and what you see. Because the Bible was written thousands of years ago. By, by the men that as God gave them utterance to write to write the accounts of what happened mm -hmm. and now we're looking at it and everything that was written from the prophecies from the prophets we're reading it and we're looking at these things going on in the world All right can I get a scripture real quick uh, Isaiah 46 and 10 because like he was going over the Bible the Bible basically um it stands alone the Bible stands alone you can go to you can't go no other book and get what you can get out, out, out the Bible. Mm -hmm. You understand? Read this real quick. The book of Isaiah, chapter 46 and verse 10. Uh -huh. Declaring the end from the beginning. Uh -huh. and verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. So this is the most high establishing himself and boasting a little bit. I'm the most high. Ain't none like me. Remember the things of old. Some of I told you in time past. Read Declaring the end from the beginning. So this Bible and its authenticity declares when God formed everything and it has the, the end times to come. 
You can read everything in this Bible. Everything. You can cover the times we're in right now as we've done. We've covered times right now present in the within the, in this Bible. Read. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. And in ancient times, we can read about the prophecies that's coming. We can read. We can go in the Bible and read about thermonuclear destruction that's coming to the earth. Mm -hmm. We can go in the Bible and read about that. Yes. We yes. can go in the Bible and, and go into our history about us coming into slavery on slave ship. We can go in the Bible and look when we was actually rulers on the earth. We can go in the Bible and we can go it's all sites, all sorts of history in here. We can read about Alexander. We can read about uh, Lysimachus. We can read about um, Artaxerxes. These are what? Um, historical figures. We can go in the Bible and read about them when they came into rulership. Mm -hmm. Read. And it's saying, my counsel shall stand. And even we can go through all the Bible and do all that. God have a plan. His divine plan is to, we went into slavery for breaking God's laws. He's going to raise us up. And we're going to rule the earth again. That's the counsel of God under Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. Mm -hmm. We can read about that throughout the Bible. You can't go no other well, no other book and, and, and read that. So mm -hmm. when you talk about the authenticity of the Bible, it's not even a comparison. Mm -hmm. Read. And I will do all my pleasure. And the Lord going to do everything he want to do because he's the host. He created everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the authenticity of the Bible. What about those that say that the, the Quran, the Torah, the, the scrolls, um, are they true, authentic? Because it's been translated at the Bible, so they believe, but yet they take scriptures from the Bible. What would you say for those who believe that the, the Quran or the Torah is more, is the authentic book? The Torah, go ahead. Go to Isaiah 34 and 16. Because when you think about the, the, the Quran, the, when, you look up the, when you look up Quran in the, di in the dictionary, it says the recital. Mm -hmm. The, the Quran is just the recital of the Bible. Yep. Mm. So that's why when you watch when you watch the majority of um, Muslims, mm -hmm. what they do cite the Bible, and the Torah is the Torah is the first five books of the Bible. Mm. And you said you said the scrolls. The mm -hmm. scrolls is the Bible. The Bible. Right. It's just now we have it in book mm -hmm. format because now we in a different time. We have mm -hmm. it in English because we speak English. Just like if those and those are in Mexico, they have a Spanish Bible. Mm -hmm. We just have a we had just have the Bible for the languages that we are in right now. We are all we in captivity. We read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34 and the 16th verse. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. So it says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, which is the Bible. And it said, and read. And it says, None of these shall fail. What is that? None of these, the prophecies, and we just we just went through a bunch of them. The prophecies not gonna fail. These prophecies that's written in the Bible, they're gonna come to pass. We've seen many of them already come to pass, and more are coming. Read, and it says, and none shall want her mate. There's no book, there's no quote unquote holy book on this earth that you can mate with the Bible. Right. The Bible is the only holy book because it's the only book that contains prophecies of what's gonna happen in this world before it ever happened many people many many religions and, and, and scholars so-called read the book of revelation and have no clue what the, what the book of revelation is talking about because it's talking about beast and dragons and and red dragon and all that and they attribute that to actual beast and red dragon and that's not what it's talking about mm -hmm. but that's because they have no understanding right. that's the that's what isaiah when we read the book is sealed mm -hmm. They don't know because they're not keeping the commandments of God. And it ain't given to them to know. And it ain't given to them to know. And and the thing about it is, okay, if the if the Quran is the holy book, what's the solution to get our people out of our conditions? Right. In Chicago, you have the the and I know some I know some people don't ascribe to the to the NOI that's here in America, like the Nation of Islam with Louis Farrakhan, but you have the 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 was the the mosque that's in Chicago that's on Stone that's on uh, Stone 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 Island. Island. Yeah, that's over over east in Chicago. The neighborhood is terrible. What is what is what is what is the solution for our people to get out of the conditions they are in? Why are we in the conditions that we are in? Does the does the Quran tell us that? Does the Quran tell us like the Bible describes? 
the reason why we are in the conditions that with the Bible, we can go through it and see why we are in the conditions that we are in and what's the solution to get out of the conditions we in. Does the Quran do that? And the Quran is not for us. That's from that's the Arabians book. Right. Hmm. That's not our book. The, 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 the Arabians know that they descend from Ishmael. Which was Abraham's son, but it wasn't yeah. who the promise was to. What the promise was to Isaac. Isaac. When you got Isaac, Jacob. Mm -hmm. Jacob is, is his name was later turned changed to Israel, for to whom we are the, the, the he's our forefather. Mm -hmm. The twelve tribes of the nation of Israel come from Israel. Which one? Um, Ishmael. 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 Yeah. But Ish. But Ishmael knows that the, uh, the Arabians know that their forefather is Ishmael, even Muhammad, when he, Muhammad was born in 570 AD. And when he came of age, he, he, he studied, we, we have the history books, I don't think we had time to go into it in depth like that, but he, he what he did was study under the Jews. And then he, that's where the Quran came from. Cause the, 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 the Islam religion as they, as they known as today, is that goes back to 622 AD. It's the most, it's the newest religion on the earth. Hmm. But yet, and the Quran was, came around in, in that time, but the Quran is older than the Bible. The Bible's been around. Read that. This is the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, Ishmaelite, uh, page 257. Referring to the nomadic tribes of Northern Arabia, all Arabs following Muhammad's example claim descendants from Ishmael. They they, they claim descent from Ishmael. Mm -hmm. And when you when you, you read, read it again, yeah, you read it again. The Ishmaelite, referring to the nomadic tribes of northern Arabia. Mm -hmm. All Arabs following Muhammad's example claim descent from Ishmael. Uh, for Ishmael. But when you when you read Ishmael, that's 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 the Arabians. Arabians. The, the Quran is for them. That's not for us. It never has been. The Bible has always been our book. But the thing is, when you examine the transatlantic slave trade that when we came, we, we took it off the west coast of Africa and brought over here, that wasn't the first slave trade. We had the sub-Saharan slave trade before that where we were in slavery under the Arabs, or the Arabs. We were in slavery under them and that's where we learned Islam. Right. Get Jeremiah 3 and 2 real quick. Jeremiah chapter three and two because the the, the Quran is is it, it doesn't go back to Abraham. Mm -hmm. Nope. The Quran does not go back to Abraham. What's that? Six, Abraham uh, was six twenty-two. Six twenty-two. Uh, what? No, I got. I got. Yeah, read that. Um, okay. The book of Jeremiah chapter three and verse two. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places. So the Bible says, look up, lift up thine okay. eyes okay. unto the high places. The high places are the places of worship. Read. And see where thou has not been lying with. This is him talking to the Israelites again. See who thou has not been lying with. Me. Who? What religions have you not lied down in adultery against the Most High God? Which nations have you not been lying with? Because every nation that we was under captivity under, we followed after their gods. Right. Read. And the ways have thou set for them. It says, and the ways has thou set for them. Meaning we sat at their footstool and learned their religion. Read. As the Arabian in the wilderness. As the Arabian in the wilderness. This shows that we were in captivity under the Arabians. And that's where we learned Islam. That's where we learned the Muslim religion. From them. That's their religion. He did, the Most High God didn't give us that. He gave that to Ishmael and his seed. We are from, we descend from Israel. Right. That's why this, That's why Ishmael was sent away from Israel, from Jacob. From Isaac, no, Isaac, Isaac. Isaac. That's why Ishmael was sent away from Isaac. Was that it on that? Uh-uh. And thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredom and with thy wickedness. And he said, thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredom and thy wickedness. That's why we're not in our land right now today. Because we were serving other gods. That's right. You have people calling in so they're agreeing everything that you're saying and you're right on point. The phone is blowing up. People are agreeing with what you're saying, and then they're saying, "Why is it that the Quran and the, are 
telling people to refer back to the Bible. Mm -hmm. They said, I was just on the last mm -hmm. end of that last phone call. They said, yeah. why are some of these religions referring, going back mm -hmm. and using this bi the scriptures from the Bible if they're telling you that the Bible isn't authentic? Right. And I wanted to add to what the what officer, was, officer was saying to uh, further answer your question, because you was mentioning about different books like scrolls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The Chronicles. the Bible? Yeah. Uh, let me get uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 12. Mm -hmm. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 12. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and the 12th verse. Come on. And father, by these, my son. Uh huh. Be admonished. Be admonished. Go ahead. Of of many books there is no end. Many what? Many books of God. Everybody writes many books concerning God or right. who God is or how should you worship God. Even if you examine the Christian church, they got thousands of books. And they don't even tell you, they don't come through the scriptures on how to fix your life. They come out of their own mouth to tell you how to fix their mouth, mm -hmm. they, uh, their lives, right? You know what, what uh, like uh, T.D. Jakes, he got a book called Woman Thou Art Loosed. Right. Where is that in the Bible? That ain't in the Bible. God yeah. ain't say that. You know what I'm saying? So right. read it again. No, I, 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 and Father, by these, my son, be admonished. Of making many books, uh -huh. there is no end. So he said, be admonished. Of making many books, there's no end. There will always be so many books uh, concerning God. But where's the re real source? What he just read in Isaiah 34, 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Mm -hmm. None of these shall fail. My words are sure. Is that it on that? And much study is the weariness of the flesh. You're going to tire yourself out. It's the weariness of the flesh. You're going to get all stressed out. You're going to get super tired and there's no end. You'll always be forever and ever confused. and ever going. Yeah, and eventually you'll be confused. Is that it? Yeah, that was it on that. Give me Isaiah 41 and 21. The book of Isaiah, chapter 41 and verse 21. Produce your call. So this is what we say to any person that thinks that the Bible is not authentic. Anybody thinks that the Israelites are not authentic and you got some some concoction or theory brought up in your mind and thinking that we Muslims or whatnot, or we got to go to different books. The Lord says, produce your cause then. Come on. Say if the Lord. Say if the who? Say if the Lord. We ain't saying that. God said it. Produce your cause then. Come on. Bring forth your strong reasons. Bring forth all your strong reasoning. Come on. Say it the king of Jacob. The king of who? Jacob. No, of all nations. Jacob. Because guess what? The Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you have a king. And it's the black Messiah, That's Jesus right. the Christ, that came and died and to redeem us from our captivity. Mm -hmm. Produce your cause, Muslims, Christians, produce it. Come on. Let them bring them forth. Come on. And shoot what thou ha what ha what has, excuse me. Let them bring them forth and show us what have happened. Show us what's going to happen. Show us the future. Come on. Tell us, tell us, can Allah produce, uh, tell us what tell us what's about to happen? Show it to me out of the Quran then. Produce it. Come on. Let them show the former things. Show us what happened in the beginning. What happened to the former worlds, the former kings, the former rulers of, of the world, the beginnings of time. How was the world created? Show me the former things. Come on. What they be. Show them. How do they, how do they exist? What they be. Come on. That we may consider them. So we can reason with it. Come on. And know the latter end of them. And what's going to happen in the last days. Produce it. Come on. Or declare us things for to come. Uh-huh. Show us the prophecies. What's going to happen with America? What's going to happen with Germany? What's going to happen with uh, France? What's going to happen with all these European nations? What's going to happen with Russia? Are we going to go to war? How's the world going to end? What's going to issue in the coming of Christ? Right. Show us the things to come. If your God is real, produce your cause. Come on. Show the things that are to come hereafter. Read. That we may know that ye are God. That you, so that you can prove that your God is authentic. If that's the if that's the that's what it is, prove it to us. Show it to us out of the Quran. If you can, read. Yeah. Do yeah. Do good or do evil. Do good or do evil. Show us your God. Do good or show him us do evil. If he can. Come on. That we, we exist. Read. That we may dismay and behold that it together. That we may be dismayed and behold it together. But what's this, what's going to be the reality? Verse 24. Behold, ye are nothing. What is Islam? Ye are of nothing. What's the Quran? Ye are of nothing. What's Christianity? Ye are of nothing. Any other idol, any other religion is garbage. That's what God says. Thus saith the Lord. Ye are nothing. 
Come on. And your work are, are of naught. And all your works is nothing. Everything you bring forth is garbage. Come on. And abomination he and an abomination is he that chooseth you. And whoever wants to follow your foolish doctrine, you are an abomination and a detestable thing as well. You also are nothing. That's right. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. Stop!